this is a special place. It's a special place to so many people in this room because it's touched so many lives. And I am one of those lives that it has touched. Uh, my first encounter with this place was actually, I was figuring it out um, about 45 years ago when I was a graduate student at the Kennedy School. Um, and I encountered Dick Light, um, who would become a member of my thesis committee. Um, it was during my time as president of Tufts that Judy McLaughlin, as Bridget said, um, lured me here to teach in your um, higher education program. And I had the privilege of working with Judy and Joe and a whole bunch of people. Um, and it was a wonderful experience and opportunity. One of the th challenges that university presidents have is leaving the job when the day comes to sort of step back and do something else. And the ed school made it easy for me to do that because Judy planted this seed in, in my head well before I knew when I was going to step down as president of Tufts. Judy, Judy said, you know, why don't you come here and join us? And so I did and had this wonderful office on the fourth floor of Gutman Hall, um, right next to Judy Rubin, Julie Rubin, and right across the hall from Pat Graham. What could be better? And with, and with, with Judy down the hall with Monica Higgins, it was, um, it, was, it was a great place. It gave me an opportunity to do something which I think all of us need to do more in which I came to understand and appreciate is absolutely essential to what the Ed School does for so many professionals. And that was to reflect on my own practice, my own practice as a university president, and to give, to think and think deeply with my professional colleagues and my students um, here at the Ed School about what it meant to be a university leader. Little did I realize back then that I would have an opportunity <laughs> to reflect once again on those lessons <laughs> um, in, in a new job which I now uh, find myself in. But it's a job which gives me an opportunity once again to do something that I am passionate about, which I know that all of you are passionate about, and that is to think about how we can do a better job of educating the next generation. Whether or not we're talking about the next generation of children, whether or not we are talking about the next generation of, of high school students, whether or not we're talking about educating the next generation of college students, or whether we are talking about the next generation of adults because one of the things that's so important about the mission of this place is that if we are to always keep growing, we always have to keep learning. And so it is the mission of this school to keep educating people literally from cradle to grave. And I think that's another thing that makes this place so special, that it makes the mission of this school at Harvard so important. Um, you are blessed with the two things, the only two things I would tell you that matter in a great university and here at the Graduate School of Education you have them in abundance. And you all know what those two things are. Great students and great faculty. And this place gives them an opportunity to come together in so many interesting and rich ways to learn from each other because that is what we do. Um, students learn from their teachers and their teachers learn from their students. But also to do scholarship which will enable and enhance the learning process at every level of society in every country of the nation. As Bridget said, I've been fortunate to travel around the country to visit high schools, not just um, in the cities that she named, but um, all over the place, but also to travel throughout the world. And when one does so, you encounter 
graduates of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Everywhere you go, um, it's, it's really quite remarkable seeing what your alumni are doing uh, to try and enhance and advance the human condition um, through the transformative power of, of education. Um, uh, President Charles William Elliott, one of my predecessors who uh, shaped Harvard during his 40 years as president of Harvard. It's hard to imagine anybody doing this job for 40 years, uh, but he did it. And not only did he shape Harvard, he shaped all of higher education. Uh, and he also helped to bring this school um, into existence. And um, Professor Paul Henry Hannes, um, who was appointed by President Elliott um, and a great champion of education, was also uh, somebody who liked to climb mountains. Uh, and he likened um, the educational process to mountain climbing. And I'd like to quote what he said because I think it's interesting. It's a little, you have to listen carefully, but it's sort of a beautiful analogy. He said, the goal in all education is always receding before the advancing student. Just as the top of a mountain seems to retreat before the climber. Remoter and higher summits appearing successively as each apparent summit is reached. And I think it's a really interesting metaphor for what we do as teachers, as scholars, and as students. Because the more and more we learn, the more and more we come to understand that which we do not know. And that which we do not know becomes the agenda for our scholarship, which then informs our lessons for the next generation of students. So we keep seeking ever higher summits, and from the top of each one, we see that which is left uh, to accomplish. Um, there's always something more to learn. There's always something more to do. It's been a privilege to be part of your community. I'd like to think I still am um, as president. And Judy, maybe someday, you know, when I step down, <laughs> you'll invite me back to once again reflect upon my practice. Congratulations to each and every one of you on 100 fabulous years um, and an even brighter future ahead. Thank you very much.